pole position. Supreme Court has boosted independence of sex in holding local body elections. Even though more than a quarter century has elapsed since the Constitution was amended to make urban and rural local bodies a self-contained third tier of governance, it is often agreed by experts that there is inadequate devolution of powers to them. This may somewhat explain their relative lack of autonomy. However, an entirely different facet of the way these local bodies function is that the manner in which their representatives are elected is often beset by controversies. Local polls are often marred by violence, and charges of arbitrary delimitation and reservation of wards. A key factor in any local body polls being conducted in a free and fair manner is the extent to which the state election commissioner, the authority that supervises the elections, is independent and autonomous. Unfortunately, most regimes in the states appoint senior bureaucrats from among their favorites to this office. In practice, sex frequently face charges of being partisan. Routine exercises such as delimiting wards, rotating the wards reserved for women and scheduled castes and fixing dates for the elections become mired in controversy as a result, as the opposition tends to believe that the exercise is being done with the ruling party's interest in mind. Even though this cannot be generalized in respect of all states and all those manning the position, it is undeniable that sex do not seem to enjoy the confidence of political parties and the public to the same extent as the Election Commission of India as far as their independence is concerned. It is in this backdrop that the Supreme Court's judgment declaring that a state election commissioner should be someone completely independent of the state government acquires salience. It has described the Goa government's action in asking its law secretary to hold additional charge as SEC as a mockery of the constitutional mandate. By invoking its extraordinary power under Article 142 of the Constitution, the court has asked all sects who are under the direct control of the respective state governments to step down from their posts. In practice, most states appoint retired bureaucrats as sex. Whether the apex court's decision would have a bearing on those who are no more serving state governments remains to be seen. However, it is clear that these governments will now have to find a way to appoint to the office only those who are truly independent and not beholden to it in any manner. The verdict will help secure the independence of sex in the future. More significantly, the court has boosted the power of the election watchdog by holding that it is open to the sex to countermand any infractions of the law made by the state government in the course of preparing for local body polls. Regimes in the states would have to wake up to the reality that they cannot always control the local body polls as in the past.